Hey everybody, welcome back. All right, so this is part three on this LS swap for this 1976 C3 Corvette. So uh, first thing we're doing is we're gonna be swapping out the oil pan because on the truck oil pan, this thing hangs very low, so low that it's gonna have a interference issue, not only with the ground, but also with the steering components, right? So this is a well-known issue, and what you want to do is you want to uh, swap out the oil, plant, oil pan. So this is a clone of the Holley 302-2 oil pan, which has a shallower sump and a shallower uh, midsection for clearance of the steering components, all right? So this oil pan came off of Amazon. It was 180 bucks. It comes with the pan, the pickup tube, gaskets and the hardware right hardware is right there so while we go ahead and rotate this engine we'll uh take the existing oil pan off and i'll show you what you need to do to get this thing installed all right so we have the engine uh, rotated and uh, full transparency i've already had this oil pan off because when i first bought the engine i actually pulled the pan off i looked at the bottom and made sure there was there was nothing going on with it so there's not a gasket on it but i figured i would just go through process of what you need to do to remove the oil pan it's pretty straightforward um there's just a bunch of 10 millimeter bolts holding the pan on so all we're gonna do this we're just gonna take those out and once you have all the bolts removed just lift the pan right off Next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna remove the bolts so they're holding down the, the uh, windage tray. These are 13s. The next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna move the uh, 10 millimeter bolt holding down the pickup tube. Go and lift off the tube. Make sure the O-ring comes out. And then go ahead and remove the windage tray. All right, so at this point, what we're gonna do is we're gonna follow the instructions from Holly, even though it's not a Holly pan. It's a clone of Holly's oil pan, so we're just gonna follow their instructions. All right, so uh, the factory windage tray, due to the, uh, the lower profile in the front, the, the front of the windage tray needs to come off. So all we're gonna do is we're just gonna cut the, the front of it off right in front of the, uh, the second set of studs. So all I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take a paint pen and then I'm just gonna just use this to make a line. Now that we have the line, our cut line, I'm gonna just go ahead and use my cutoff saw and zip the front of that off. All right, so after about 10 or 15 minutes on uh, using the angle grinder, we managed to cut that down and cleaned up all the edges, make sure there was no burrs on it. And most importantly, I sprayed this down and I wiped it off because the last thing you want is uh, grinding dust and, the, uh, and anything else being introduced into the engine. So I'm gonna put the, the wood tray back on there real quick. And what we're gonna do at this point, we're just gonna take the oil pan. We're just gonna drop it down there. Get it into the rough position and make sure it's sitting flat. All right, so with the oil pan on there, I'm just pushing down on the corners, making sure it's sitting flat, it's no rocking on it. So at this point, I think we're pretty good. I'm modifying the windage tray for the pan. The next thing we have to do is we have to take a, take the uh, the pickup tube and mount it on there and make sure that there's no interference with the tube to the tray. And I'm just gonna put the tube in there without the O-ring for now into the pickup. And all we're gonna do is we're just gonna put it down there. And we can tell right from there that we have an interference with the oil pickup tube, right? 
So because the uh, the window tray still exists there, won't allow it to sit flat. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take my paint pen and I'm going to mark it where I think we're going to have to relieve it, which is right about there. So what we'll do is we'll just draw a straight line and then we'll notch it back here and we'll cut that out. All right, so at this point, we went ahead and relieved the windows tray like we talked about. And then we got the pickup tube in there and I have it fastened on the corner. We got a nut there and a nut there. And I've been playing around with this for the last 10 or 15 minutes. And I've noticed that the uh, there's a very minimal amount of play on the pickup tube, but it'll actually transfer into a lot of air on the oil pan. So I've been going back and forth with it, going back and forth with it. And what I've noticed was that the pickup tube, when I would tighten it down, um, it was actually hitting the corner of the windage tray. And as a result, when I went ahead and tightened it up, it would basically kick the oil pickup tube out this way, and then it would uh, conflict with the oil pan. So at this point, I relieved it and I'm going back with another test fit. What we do is we drop it on there. And right now we're good. So the alignment is pretty good because before I did that, uh, it would actually clock it counterclockwise and I wouldn't be able to rotate it to line up the holes. But now that I made that additional relief on the window tray. I'm able to drop it down there and it looks like the alignment is gonna be pretty good with plenty of adjustment on the pan when I go do the alignment on the back of the, of the block. All right, so at this point, I'm pretty happy with the fitment of the oil pan on the block. And I've had the oil pan on and off probably about I don't know, 10 or 12 times. Because of that, what I'm doing is I'm checking the surface of the oil pan, making sure that there's no dings on it. And I did have one, and that was a result for me just, uh, you know, putting the oil pan on and off. So I had a little bit of a ding on the oil pan. So all I did is I took a file and I cleaned that up. And then I've noticed on the back corner, this was actually a uh, manufacturing defect. Um, looked like the, uh, the oil pan may have been dropped. And I had a little bit of a uh, proud surface on this side. Even though it really doesn't matter, but it kind of does because the, uh, the uh, bell housing for the transmission is going to come up against that. So I want to make sure that is nice and flat as well. So again, I just took a file off of that and cleaned up that edge. So another thing that Holly wants you to do is um, this baffle plate or whatever you want to call it. Um, it's held on by four bolts. So there's one there, one there, one there, one there. And they recommend that you um, lock tight them in. But before you do that, they also recommend completely flushing out the, uh, the oil pan, make sure that there's no dust and debris in there. So we're just gonna wash out with some brake clean, make sure it's nice and clean. All right, so the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna install this little oil cooler block off plate because we're not using an oil cooler for this install. And we just clean it off with some brake clean. And the kit comes supplied with a gasket. So we're gonna use that. And I'm also gonna Loctite these bolts as well.
All right, so the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna install the, uh, the oil filter fitting. And I am going to put a couple wraps of Teflon tape on the threads. Just to ensure we have a good seal. So I just got it snugged for now. I'll actually go to final torque once we got it on the uh, on the engine. All right, so at this point, we are ready to install the oil pickup tube into the oil pump and make sure that you use the a new O-ring because this O-ring is very vital in maintaining oil pressure on it. If you try to reuse a O-ring that you have, more than likely you're gonna have a failure or you're gonna have low oil pressure. So we've gone ahead and cleaned the surface of the oil pump and all I'm going to do is I'm just going to take some WD-40 and saturate it and then we want to make sure that we don't pinch that o-ring when we put it in there so we want a good solid engagement in there There you go, it felt pretty good. So now we're gonna tighten down the plate and we're gonna use the two 10 millimeter bolts that are supplied in the kit. All right, so at this point, we got the oil pickup tube right where we want it. We got the, uh, the one 10 millimeter bolt holding it down. This tube has provisioning for two, but honestly, with the front cover, there's no way to get at it. So what I've done is I've aligned it for now. And what I'll do is once we take the front cover off to replace the uh, front main seal. I will then put the second bolt in the oil pickup tube. But at this point, we are pretty much good to go. I've already done a test fit of the oil pan to make sure that we had no alignment issues with the uh, pan to the tube. Now we're just gonna tighten down the fasteners for the, wind for the windage tray. All right, so at this point, we're ready to uh, drop the gasket on and then set the pan on. So um, you wanna take a little bit of silicone, put it in the four spots where the rear cover and the front cover meet the, uh, the block. And once you've done that, now we're ready to set the gasket on. Here we go. All right, so before you send the oil pan to your final torque, one thing you wanna do is you wanna to come to the back of the engine and check the alignment from the oil pan to the block because there is some adjustability on the oil pan. And one thing you wanna do is make sure that the oil pan is lined up with the block because when the transmission is mounted, it's gonna basically made up to that surface and if it's not aligned correctly, it's you're not going to be able to uh, get the uh, transmission seated up against the engine. So make sure that is nice and aligned and you're good to go. All right, so that's the first of many steps as far as getting this engine into that C3. Not that big of a deal. Pretty straightforward other than the, the uh, windage tray. It's pretty much a standard oil pan replacement process. So... At this point, we are ready to go. Uh, one thing to be aware of, that the oil filter adapter is for a Gen 4. So when you do go to buy an oil filter, just tell them you have a 2008 
Silverado with a 5.3 and that's a Gen 4. So, because if you try to get one for a, a Gen 3, you can notice that this is bigger. So that's for a Gen 4. And other than that, we're pretty much good to go. So at this point, if there's any thoughts, questions, or concerns as far as what I did, go ahead and leave a comment in the comments box. I'll get back to you as soon as I can. And as always, thanks for watching and have a great day. See ya. Thanks.